So today we're going to take a look at a couple of things that don't really stand out, but could be useful for you and your projects. Without further ado, let's get started. So first I want to say thank you for everyone that's taken a look at the new packs that I have available. And for those who actually thought that they were worthwhile with purchasing, I appreciate it. So the first thing that I wanted to dive into is using the bypass feature. Now this feature, you can do either your color grade or fusion. And the idea here is that maybe you worked on something, but you need to come back and edit and you don't want to continuously keep processing those heavy workload situations that might be on your timeline. So this little button over here is to do a bypass. This has been here for a long period of time. And then when DaVinci Resolve introduced Fusion, they also added the ability to bypass Fusion projects as well. So if we just right click on here, we can see that we can either set it to bypass color or Fusion or both of them. Currently it is set for both of them. So let's take this little clip here and let's make this into a fusion comp. And then I'll go in and let's just kind of throw something in here real quick that might uh, make it a little harder to process. So this is just one of the slides that I have available. And without really doing much here, you can see that it's a little slide as titles, whatever. Okay, so that just kind of added a little bit of a workload to the, to the timeline. So if I was to play this, we're going to see that it's going to kind of chug here, right? Now we could cache this out and it'll cache pretty quickly. But one of the things you can do is you can just turn this off and it'll automatically bypass that stuff. So that's kind of a neat little thing. Let's do one here with a color page. So I'm just going to turn this on. Obviously, we have a color grade here. It's playing pretty smooth, uh, mainly because it's the black magic raw stuff. But uh, let's add something in here that takes a little bit uh, more to actually process. And I'm just going to add in um, some grain because this is uh as you can see the grain here uh, because this is the uh, black magic stuff i my system won't really have a problem processing it you can see a little bit of glitching there but uh same way here you can just disable that uh, and if you just turn off let's say we have it now the bypass is only going to do color so now it's only doing the color but if i come over here we still have all of the fusion stuff so that's just one little thing that you can enable if you already have your timeline already set out but you want to go back and change something but you don't want to have to process all of those because maybe you have something added that's a little heavier so next going over to the attributes now this is something that i have to do with these videos um, so i thought this would be the perfect footage to show this so typically what i would do is i would take my shot here obviously this is before color and i would size it up bring it down into the corner sometimes you might take a break or if you have it cut up and you set something let's say we had you know this one cut a couple of times and we change something here and we want all of these to reflect the same exact crop. The easiest way to do this is, okay, so let's say we have this, let me reset this here quick. So let's say we have this already set down in the corner or whatever it is that you're adding or changing, uh, but it's just moving the attributes from one clip to the other. So I have this one selected, I'm just going to hit Control C. And then once I do that, I'm going to come over to my other clip and then I'm gonna hold Alt, and hit V. When you do that, it's just going to be pasting just the attributes. We're not actually pasting what we had copied. It's just the attributes. So it's Alt V to paste just the attributes. And then I would say, okay, the position was changed and also the scaling, AKA zoom was changed. So I would say those hit apply. Now it's down in the corner, identical to this. So if I was to, let's say, cut this here and cut this here, Let's just remove that space. When these would go from one to the other, it would look like it, you know, it was a continuous shot and there was no sizing that was changed at all in between there. So that's just one thing that I actually use quite often. But uh, if you don't know about it, you might be sitting here coming into here. Okay, this is you know, six, nine, seven point whatever. I might copy that and then paste it over in the other one. Now don't do that. Alt or uh, yeah, Alt V to paste, but you just have to click on one and then it's Control C to copy. The next one that we're gonna do is annotation. So like, let's say we came in and we just added a marker. So markers can get added to the timeline itself, but then can also be added to clips within a timeline. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. Let's do this how 
most people are probably going to use it where they see um, the actual clip. So if I don't have anything selected and I click here, it's going to add a marker up here. Now this marker, both markers pretty much work the same. Um, but this marker is set on the timeline. So if I would move something that a marker is obviously going to stay there. But the other thing that you can do is you can click on the clip itself and click this button and now it's on the clip. So if I move this, that marker is going to go uh, with it. Uh, a couple of other things with the markers that most people probably already know is if we come over here, we get a little bit of information. We can double click on it and add some more. And then hit done. And now that's there. And also uh, right here, we can see that it was uh, that there's more information in there. Obviously, clicking on it, you can change the color, add keywords. That's more for if you're working with other people and you have keywords because then that makes it searchable. So you might know about those things, but what a lot of people don't know about, so like, let's say we're going through this and we have a great color grade going on and then we come here. And this says diesel, but it's just some text that I'm just gonna use referencing to show this. We could just say, okay, we're gonna point that out that we want that blurred, let's say. And we could come in a little bit and click on it, add a uh, marker, double click on the marker, Say remove word. Okay, now they know what to remove. But if you really look at this shot, we got maybe some words here, we got words here, and we got some words back here. What words did you want removed? One of the things that you can do, like you can point out things. So if we come over to here and we go down to annotations, we can say, okay, we want this, or you can come up here and you can change it. So maybe we want that and we want that and then you will have that information there that you could see now you have to make sure that whatever you want to add it to that you have selected so i was saying before we had it on the clip and then we also had it on the timeline you can add annotations to both so that's just something to uh to keep in mind so if we didn't want that there say we didn't want that one there having this select it having this we could you know say okay remove that then it's down there and then we could click on it and say whatever it is that we want removed so that's kind of how the annotations work now this is really good if you're working on something collaboratively if you have the studio version and you have all the your systems linked up together everyone's working on the same project you can point out say you know hey the colorist or hey the vfx artist they need to make sure that this is corrected or whatever the thing is you're pointing out all right, so now let's go over to dynamic zoom. Now dynamic zoom is um, pretty straightforward. What it does is it just takes whatever the beginning of the clip is and what the end of the clip is and in between, it automatically times out a zoom. So it's very easy, you just click it and boom. Now we have a zoom, right? And let's say that's going the wrong way. We come into here, we click it and now it's going to zoom the other way, right? Pretty easy. Now if you were to, in this, if you were to make a cut, so like let's say we cut here, now what's going to happen is the duration of this clip, it's going to get retimed and the zoom is going to happen again. So we have a zoom, dynamic zoom here. We have another one here. Obviously, because they're both going, um, you can kind of see a little bit of an issue there. But the idea here is over the length of that clip, it automatically calculates the, the, uh, the timing for it. So you don't have to put keyframes, just an easy, quick way of uh, zooming in. One of the things that I, I, I get questions about is there isn't very much uh, ability to adjust this. Now, there actually is. If we come here and we click zoom, what we can see is we have a red box. I don't know if you can see that. We have a red box and then we have a green box. Now we can take this box and make it smaller. We could pick a location. And now what's gonna happen is over the, the duration of this, it's gonna go from the one box to the other box, right? So. Uh, and you could flip it around and make it go the other way into it and you can position these to kind of work however you want and move them to wherever you want and however far you want them to really zoom in so maybe we really wanted to zoom in on his eyes there we go we don't have to add any keyframes in and we have that zoom going all the way in one caveat is if you ever want to cut up a clip 
or ch manipulate it in any way. Uh, the way dynamic zoom works is it doesn't have any keyframes. So it just takes the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip and it does the zoom over that. So if we put a cut in here, it's going to be, oh, this is a clip with dynamic zoom. This is a clip with dynamic zoom. Because they were the same clip initially, they're going to have the same um, settings. Um, so if we were to look at this one, we can see the little box. If we come over to this one, we're gonna also see the little box. So it copied over the settings from one to the other, but the timing is still independent for each clip. So you'll get this weird like double zoom in. If you ever needed to cut a clip like this, this is where compound clips come in because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this clip, we're not gonna change it, and because the dynamic zoom is set up for this clip, what we're gonna do with this clip is we're gonna take this clip and put it in a timeline of its own and then that timeline we're going to cut up. So in other tools, it's called nesting. Same thing here, just right click and we're gonna go compound clip. Now it's a compound clip. It has all of those settings set up on the clip itself. As you can see, this compound clip doesn't have dynamic zoom, but if we were to take this, open in timeline, it's going to open up that compound clip and this clip here has a dynamic zoom. So coming back over to the primary timeline that we were working on, now I can click cut this and we still have a zoom here and it's going to leave right off where it was before because we're not affecting the clip that actually has the dynamic zoom effect added to it. So there we go. Those are the tips that we have for you today. Some things that you might not have known about within DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. Hopefully they help you out in some way, shape or form, or maybe you just learned something new. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.